Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Welmer just read for you. I share with you today at verse 1. Jesus says, Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. When I was in the ninth grade, I tried out for my school's basketball team. Now, I was pretty small in the ninth grade. I was just a little bit over five foot tall. And as you know, in basketball, it really helps if you're taller. But I tried out anyway. I worked really hard at the practice times, played good defense, even made a few shots. But by the time it came to pick the team, I didn't make it. I thought I was going to make it, but I was the last one cut from the team. It was very disappointing. Have you ever had a dream or a plan in your life that you really wanted to happen and it didn't? I imagine we all have. We've all been disappointed when a dream or a plan or an idea didn't work out. You know, many people are really good at starting things. But they're not very good at finishing things. Statistics tell us that 92% of the people who start out with a goal most of them never finish. 92% of the people who start out never finish. That's hard. That's a lot of people. That's a lot. I guess maybe if I had practiced a little harder before I tried out for the team, maybe I would have made the team. You know, it's true, isn't it? If you want to be a good runner, you have to run a lot. If you want to be a good swimmer, you have to swim a lot. If you want to be you know, good at singing, you have to sing a lot, right? Well, last week we started this red letter challenge. And I really want you to be able to finish the challenge and not fade out and not just fizzle out. So today I'm going to teach you not just how to begin this challenge, but how to finish it. I can't believe that 92% of you are not going to finish this challenge that we have just started this past week? Can you believe that? I mean, after all that Jesus has done for us, dying on a cross to forgive all of our sins, rising from the dead to overcome death for us so that one day we can have eternal life in heaven, don't you think that we should be good representatives for Jesus while we're here on this earth? You remember last week, I gave you five words that we're going to be talking about in this challenge. And the words were being, forgiving, serving, giving, and going. Well, each week I'm going to be talking about one of those key words. Today I'm going to begin with the word being. You know, one of the great sports that we have today is called rowing. The aim of the sport is real simple. The first team of rowers that crosses the finish line win. But rowing's a little different than other sports. You know how in most sports, like in running, for example, you run focusing on the goal, focusing on the finish line, right? Well, rowing's not that way. The rowers, they don't face the finish line. No, the rowers face backwards. The rowers fix their eyes on a man who sits at the end of the boat, man or a woman, and that man or woman is called the cox, spelled C-O-X. The cox is the one who focuses and fixes his or her eyes on the finish line. So you see, that's why the relationship between the rowers and the cocks is so important. They have to work together pretty well to be able to win the race. 
it's really very similar to the way it is with God in our lives, isn't it? Because as we look to God, as we fix our eyes on God and trust Him, well, God's going to give to you and me a victory over life and over death. That's why in the Word of God before us today it says, run with perseverance the race that is set before you, fixing your eyes on Jesus. Now, Jesus gives us some great ways to do this, some great ways to fix our eyes on him. Jesus says, abide in my word. Read my word, Jesus says. Jesus says, pray earnestly. He says, talk to me. Jesus says, worship the Lord your God. Jesus wants us to come together to worship him each week. Jesus says, come with me to a quiet place and to get some rest. Jesus wants us to rest with him each week. You see, following Jesus is twofold. It means being with Jesus, and it also means then doing what Jesus says. But you have to be with Jesus before you can do what he says, right? Here is how it works. When I spend time with Jesus, my relationship with him grows stronger. When I come to worship Jesus, I get the power that I'm going to need to go through the ups and downs in this world. When I read the Bible, I just can't wait to share what I'm reading with others. When I talk to God in prayer, there's a peace that just comes over me. It's your time with Jesus that makes things like this happen. Now, all of us would say that Jesus is the most important one in our lives, right? Every one of us would say that. But why doesn't it show more in our lives? Why is it that Jesus isn't often the most important one in our lives? You know, statistics tell us that on an average, people spend four hours a day watching television. Statistics also tell us that on an average, people will spend an average of two hours a day on their cell phones. That's a lot. If I asked you if you're busy, every one of you would say yes. Because you are busy. You're busy with lots of different things. But what are you most busy with? Jesus says here in the book of Matthew, come to me. All who weary and are burdened and who are busy, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Make Jesus the priority in your life. And let me give you some practical ways to do this. First, come to church regularly. Don't schedule church around other activities. Don't schedule church around sporting events. Don't schedule church around having to clean your house or mow your lawn. Make Jesus the priority in your life. Jesus is the most important one in your life. Next, read your Bible. I would imagine every one of you have a Bible in your home. Most of the time the Bible just sits on the shelf, right? I encourage you to take that Bible and put it in a place where you're going to see it every day. Put it on the kitchen table, put it in the bathroom where you get ready in the morning. And just open it up and read one verse or two verses a day. Just one or two verses. You'll find it'll make a big difference in your life. Also, next, get involved in some kind of group with Christians in your church. It can be a fellowship group. It could be a women's group. It can be a men's group. It could be singing in the choir. Just find a group of folks to get together with. It'll make a big difference. Next, pray to God. Make time to talk to God every day. It could be in the morning when you wake up. could be in the evening as you're going to sleep. could be any time during the day. Talk to God every day. And then one more. Listen to some Christian music. What station do you have the radio on? As you're driving, we we spend so much time driving, don't we, every day. 
turn the dial to some Christian music. It'll make you feel a lot better. Because Christian music will make you, uh, it'll give you a soothing, relaxing feeling. Try it and see. If you put these kind of things into practice in your life, you're going to find a real meaning and a real purpose for why you're here. You're going to be also at peace with God. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 40, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When he was running a marathon in Mexico City, John Stephen Akwari got some cramps in his legs because of the high altitude there in Mexico City. He was about halfway through the race when another runner hit him and he fell to the ground and hurt his knee and he dislocated his shoulder. He was injured, he, he should have just quit the race, but he didn't, he kept on running. Now, he finished the race, but he was dead last. He finished an hour behind the winner. Hardly anyone was in the stands when he finished the race, but there was a reporter there, and the reporter came up to him and said, why in the world, when you were hurting so badly, why did you finish the race? And John said, my country did not send me here to start the race. My country sent me these 5,000 miles to finish the race. Well, in a similar way, God did not put you and me on this earth as Christians to not finish our lives as Christians. God wants us to finish strong. I mean, Jesus gave his life to help us to finish strong. Think about it. If you start with this new relationship with God, don't you think God's going to help you to finish a relationship with him if you'll let him? If you have a Christian marriage, don't you think God's going to help to keep that marriage going? If you have children that God's blessed you with, don't you think God's going to give you guidance in raising those children? If God has given you this great church to worship in, a church where you want to lead people to Jesus, don't you think he's going to give you ways in this church that you can do things so that more people one day will be able to be in heaven? God is a God who finishes what he starts. Many people years ago tried to stop Jesus from finishing his work on this earth, didn't they? Oh, they did everything they could to make Jesus' life miserable, but Jesus kept talking to people about how to get to heaven. There are going to be a lot of people here on this earth that are going to try to stop you from living as a Christian. They're all around us, and they're going to try to stop you, but don't let them stop you by regularly being with Jesus, by putting into practice these practical things I've been talking with you about today, you're going to be able to face the problems and the troubles that are everywhere around us in this world. You're going to be able to win the race of life. And you're going to be able to finish strong with Jesus someday in heaven. God bless us as we continue to be with him. Amen. Let's now stand as we join together in the next song of praise.